वेलकम एवरी वन टूडे आई विल डिस्कस द टॉपिक जैक्स डेरिडा वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट मेजर थिंकर ऑफ पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म सो ही हैज गिवन मेनी आइडियाज लाइक डी कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन डिफरेंस मेटाफिजिक्स ऑफ प्रेजेंस फेलेगोसेंट्रिसिज्म फ्री प्ले आर्क राइटिंग फार्माकॉन ट्रेस हॉन्टोलॉजी साउस रेच्योर कोरा एंड अपोरियम so he has given these ideas in many of his books i am mentioning the three most important books written by him one is of grammatology next is speech and phenomena and other essays on husserl's theory of science and the third one is writing and difference these three essays three books came in 1967 and one of his most important essay which was later on included in the book writing and difference It, it the essay came in 1966 the name of the essay is structure sign and play in the discourse of the human sciences so it came in 1966 so one by one i am explaining the ideas first one is deconstruction so when you listen to the term deconstruction what do you feel what will its meaning be construction means building up something and deconstruction mean when you are breaking that structure so what structure he has broken down d in deconstruction he breaks he challenges he questions the philosophical the western philosophical binaries which were there before like signified over signifier speech over writing so these are the philosophical binaries what he did we always think that these binaries they coexist peacefully but actually he says that one is above the other like one plays an upper hand over the other like speech over writing signified over signifier so what he does he deconstructs those ideas so if we say that uh, traditionally it is said that speech is given more importance over writing he deconstructs that idea so he has taken this term from martin heidegger's destruction where how it is written destruction is written like this k is used so martin he from martin heidegger's destruction he has used this term so heidegger used this term while exploring meanings you know exploring meanings in a text and he used this term to deconstruct the philosophical binaries so you see that according to him deconstruction or meaning in a language how we understand the meaning in a language it should be in a synchrony with other words in the language and in a diachrony with its historical definition for example when you are saying a word hut how do you understand its meaning it is in synchrony with other words in the language like with house so you understand hut how if you if you know the meaning of what is a house what is a palace you will understand the meaning of hut too so that is called synchrony with other words in the language so basically he deconstructs the binaries the opposition which were then followed so next is next is the term difference so you see the spelling it is r a n c e the spelling is difference it is not difference so what is that difference you can say it is made up of two meanings different and differed now what they all do what derrida is actually doing in the post modern era he is telling us that the meaning making process here we are trying to understand the meaning making process so we have said that in post modern era what we do we do not believe that anything is stable we do not we do not have faith we look at everything with a skeptical attitude we do not have faith in a singular meaning so what derrida does here he says that yes the meaning the signified it is never stable why first is it is different and second it is deferred deferred means the meaning is delayed now how you will say that it is different for example a man is 
not man a man is a man because it is not a woman so it is different and it is meaning is differed so let me tell the one example suppose you are finding the meaning of the word man so you open the dictionary you are searching the meaning you will find man then you will find human so related words you will continue to find it out so you will never he says that the meaning is meaning making in the process it is deferred it is delayed you will never reach to a specific meaning from one signified you will move you will find the meaning then that will become your next signifier then you will again find its meaning it signified you will find find so it a chain will continue of signifier signified signifier signified so meaning is his concept is difference you will remember it like different and deferred so meaning making making process is deferred third concept is metaphysics of presence what is metaphysics of presence he says that from ancient times what we do we give more importance to the present what is present what we see so presence is given much more importance than what is absent so when we see something as present we take it as its meaning and we do not we overlook what what has not been said sometimes you'll find that uh, silence has many words right but silence is much more prominent than your speech so what is that when you are silent you are not speaking but there is so much meaning in your silence so what he says in presence is that whatever we see i'm speaking something so there is meaning in it and you will obviously more give much more importance to it so in language in finding meaning also we do the same thing whatever we see we take that and we grasp it and we overlook what has not been said uh, this term uh, aristotle has defined also this how he has defined presence or how he has defined time time he has said that it is the present moment now and something before or after it there also from that time presence is given much more importance than what is absent so he also deconstructs this idea and wants to say that absence is also that much important as present for this phalagocentrism this is a portmanteau word portmanteau means combination of two words so what are the two words one is phalocentrism another is logocentrism so both are combined to form phalagocentrism so what is it phala uh, phalas you know phalas means masculine point of view and logocentrism is where we give more importance to the language in finding the meaning of a word so what he says that western per- perspective has always been phalagocentric means we give more importance to language in finding the meaning of a word and that that perspective through which we find the meaning that is masculine so his ideas has been used by feminist many feminist helen sixers many has used his ideas to say that we have been colonized women have been colonized by the phalagocentrism attitude next is free play so free play this is also explained in his essay structure sign and play where so this this concept you need to understand for understanding this you see free play is what where no one is uh, stopping you from doing anything that you understand as free play so how suppose you have a center right you have a center and something surrounding it so you see that except that center everything that is left that is free play for you now you suppose that an event or there are many ideas from the we have seen that the idea of existence idea of being idea of man idea of god suppose man is the center okay so everything around that center all the meaning that are playing around it they are in free, free play now the center has two roles what it is doing it is on the one hand it is controlling it is it is organizing the whole structure because still now though he deconstructs this idea yet he says that we cannot think of any structure without a center and 
on the other hand this center also delimits it limits the interpretations why because it is the center so it is delimiting it is um, you can say putting a bracket on the interpretations that you can give to any words any meanings he also said that the center is also in the center and also not the center how suppose it is the center because it is in it and it is not the center why because the center is controlling the structure right so if someone if a teacher is controlling if a teacher is controlling the whole class if managing the whole class so on in the one hand teacher is organizing the class and the, also the teacher is not a part of the students it is something outside that so it is able to organize them so it, for the center also it is in the center also and it is not the center also now what is this center or how it comes so he says that like an event okay so all this how we find the center suppose uh, we say that the man is the center of the universe we are every all our ideas are surrounding this so after this this idea man became the center of the earth before it what was it god was the center of everything so center is what we will say it is nothing it is substituting we are substituting one center and the other at first god was in the center then man became the center so we are substituting something now what derrida says that we a center when you are substituting it we are saying that we are giving a uh, rise to a new structure a rupture of an event a disruption in it but what derrida says that a center cannot be repeated you are saying the god is the center next you are saying the man is the center so we are trying to repeat it we are trying to substitute it but it is not possible because there are traces of the past so a past system though you say that it that event has passed yet when man is the center then also there are traces of the previous system that god is the center so also if you say in the meaning making process also free play is what now derrida's ideas all of them are related to each other the way he said that we cannot find a fixed meaning to anything similarly all his ideas they are related you cannot say that this idea has this meaning and this is it so you can relate it like free play of meaning you cannot ever reach to a complete meaning of a thing so that is the free play of interpretations next is archaic writing what is archaic writing uh, we have seen that Uh, speech was in the ancient age given more importance to writing why speech it was thought that it we are telling something from our live memory and writing is a poor em- imitation of our speech so what he says he says he challenges his idea actually and uh, he says that writing in itself is also writing and speech both both are repeated repetitions previously it was said that writing is a imitation and a repetitive phenomena but he said that speech and writing both they are uh, repetitive and you cannot say that one is having an upper hand on the other you cannot say the speech is having an upper hand over writing and he says about arc writing arc writing is what he is referring to a system which was semi flexible before we knew how to speak or how to write something which was much before this like uh, there were notches found on the rope before in the civilizations so those were examples of arc writing that was a semi flexible structure that was present much before we learned how to speak or how to write next is pharmacon so pharmacon he has mentioned these ideas in his writing plato's pharmacy so what is pharmacon pharmacon has three meanings that is it is can be told as a remedy as a poison or as a scapegoat so you can say what he told he mentioned this idea in his reference he uh, it was said that uh, writing it acts as a poison to our memory because you are it's uh, because it is hindering writing it hinders our ability to think but he challenges this idea and says what i said here that no both are complex things and you cannot give priority over speech and say that writing uh, is much uh, not that important to speech he gives importance to both the things next is stress 
so let me uh, men mention one information that of grammatology it was in uh, english it was translated it was written by gayatri chakraborty spivak whom uh, whose ideas i have discussed in my other video on post colonialism so trace is the word that she has used to explain uh, derrida's idea because there are many words similar to trace in english right like track or path but but she has found this nearer to derrida's idea so what is trace trace you see trace is a a remnant of something so in meaning making process in a, suppose i say the word man light day so you think in your mind whenever i say man there is a trace of the word woman whenever i say night there is a trace of the word light or day when i say day you will uh, find a trace of day and night so the trace of the opposite words are always there whenever i say man there is a trace of the word woman whenever i say day there is a trace of the word night so this is what trace is all about so it is saying what that present what is present so you relate this idea with metaphysics of presence man is written we are giving more importance to man but there is a trace of the word woman so what is absent that is also coming before us so that is also bringing its own meaning to us next is the idea of hauntology so you can see hauntology something which haunts haunts meaning you know that ghost haunts haunting idea something which repetitively comes to your mind so hauntology it was uh, written by derrida in spectres of marx in 1993 where actually he is saying where he quotes uh, marx's idea that marx says that europe is still it is haunted by a specter specter of communism so it means actually what some idea from the past it comes to our present and it has its effect on our presence so it is also playing see you a play with presence and absence so a system which was in the past yet it comes to the presence and there is it 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 haunts our present next is the idea of source rashur you will see it in english we will say it under eraser so under eraser suppose i write a word uh, a word um, i i don't find a proper word for something suppose i am writing happy but what i am feeling right now it is not exactly happy it is something else else i have different uh, feeling but i cannot explain it in a proper word so what i do i strike it out or i just erase it erase it to such an extent that you can see the traces that something was written so what you can see it under eraser means in language also sometimes what happens we find that some word is not appropriate yet we cannot find a replacement to it so martin heidegger he used this uh, under eraser he used this thing but how derrida explained it he further explained this idea and said he questions the whole system of signification so we are believing so much in signified and signifier but he says that see something which we give importance to what that is present so this this is present yet it cannot fulfill the requirement the emotion that you have this word cannot express so the impossibility of presence is explained by this idea something which is present yet that is impossible that cannot explain what you are feeling so we whole system of signification is challenged by derrida in this idea okay next is the idea of kora kora is what plato uh, said it is it has a very ancient origin of this word so ancient greek uh, the area outside the ancient greek polis that was called kora so suppose it is a third space okay it is a third space uh, compare it with a mirror which reflects everything but nothing stays in it right in mirror what happens you see so many things in a mirror but nothing stays in it so derrida also says in the uh, in meaning making process what derrida says that when we try to name something we name a logic we name a concept there also actually it is not staying it has nothing 
nothing is staying in it it is in kora it is in the third space so your attempt to name something to name a concept he defies that attempt right so last is aporia what is aporia aporia is an you will see impossible path so where it is like which uh, you are driving a car you come to the end of the road and there is no road before so you will say you are in a aporia so there is nothing to go beyond that suppose you are reading a text and you are you are reading a text and or you are uh, you explaining something and in the next moment you are contradicting yourself so what is happening after this repetition you are explaining and you are contradicting yourself you come to such a point where you can cannot explain anything more so you have come to an aporia that is a state you cannot move farther from that state so he says derrida says that it is also it is also very useful why because that doubt that can give rise to that doubt itself it can give rise it is giving rise to a new idea right i thought uh, explaining something then in the process i contradicted myself so at last i am coming to an to such a state where there is no path i am in a doubt but that doubt itself is useful in the meaning making process so these are all the i made a comprehensive analysis of all his ideas i have many many places you will find the two or three ideas have been explained i have given importance to all his terms yet i will say that deconstruction metaphysics of presence difference the five ideas they are very important uh, if you want to understand derrida and i think that you have enjoyed it and uh, thank you for watching enjoy keep enjoying literature and if you have any doubts you can mention that in the comment box like share and subscribe my channel that will encourage me a lot to come up with such videos come up with more upcoming such videos come up with videos